Hey guys, well we got another classic here at WFO. I couldn't let this one slip through my fingers, so I had to go take it for a drive. This is Garrett's 1960 CJ5. Uh, as you can see, the interior is awesome. It's not very often that a 284 pound man fits comfortable into a CJ5, and that uh, has to do with the dash, swing pedals, tilt column, you know, all the custom stuff that's been done to this. So I'm gonna cruise it around a little bit, you know, get the feel for it. We'll pull off up here and uh, I'll do a walk around. It's something that uh, you're gonna wanna check out. thing is so smooth so fun to drive so there's a pretty good backstory on this Jeep this is Garrett's Jeep uh, he grew up over in Mendocino County where I grew up and uh, I actually played t-ball against Garrett and Little League Baseball um, and then here we are pass crossed you know 30 something years later so this Jeep was actually uh, his grandfather in 1962 traded an old flat fender for this Jeep and it's a 60 CJ5. It's been in the family the whole time. Um, Garrett's dad actually took it to Chico State in 1969, had it there from 69 to 72. Over all the years it's had different engine changes and swaps and different rebuilds and when Garrett got it in 07 from his dad it actually had a 283 and a three speed and that's when Garrett said I'm tearing it all apart I'm going to rebuild it for the kids the family and it actually went to our friend Tim and Tim's the one that did all the work. Um, we did the axle work, we did some gear and locker stuff, but basically our friend Tim did the build, but it's such a clean build uh, that we had to show you guys. So to start with, um, pretty simple, spring under on Wrangler Springs. Are, these are two and a half inch BDS springs. It's got 35 inch tires on 15 inch wheels. And obviously that classic uh, Mickey Thompson classic two alloy rim look. Um, the front axle is a wide track jeep model 30 wait a minute it's not a wide track it's a narrow track with 456 gears in it and arbs that we just put in and then we did some dom steering for the model 30. one of the signature things that tim dempsey does um, when he's building the jeep is he extends the frame and then sinks the steering box down and in uh, which allows the steering geometry to be really good for the power steering conversion have it drive down the road good um, this is a Warren 8274, obviously a must on an early CJ. Um, while we're standing right here, we'll pop under the hood and take a peek at it. So one of the things that's kind of cool about this latest restoration that Garrett did is this is a TBI fuel injected, you know, throttle body injected 4.3 Chevy V6. As you can see, just fits in there perfect, really clean, really classic. Some of the simple details like unplugging your wires here, took up the lights for when you flat tow it, all built into the harness. Got a hydraulic CJ clutch, um, and then a CJ power brake booster um, with a disc disc master cylinder on here. So something I really do like, and a lot of people don't understand, is he went all the way to get the most onboard air. So this is a York air compressor bolted onto the 4.3 still runs the serpentine belt extra extra idler pulley in there and then tim built a nice little manifold and we ended up just putting the arbs in so here's where we stack the solenoids for the arb this is the pressure switch for the arb so the arbs are actually running off of the york onboard air compressor uh, which is really cool um, he showed me this the other day check this out the antenna under the hood he said the radio works great still um, so as we keep walking around this thing, um, some of the kind of cool features, I'll close the hood. Whenever you're working on a Jeep, always close the hood and re-latch it. Never close it and not latch it. We've, we've made that mistake before. Um, so this is just a piece of quarter inch diamond plate that Tim breaks and puts underneath it. It's clean, not obnoxious, and strengthens everything. Um, 
Old school looking roll cage was built, a little double hoop action. Speakers are up in the roll cage. And if you look up front there, you can actually see that the stereo is sucked between the two roll cage tubes as well. All the wiring runs down the uh, roll cage, clean little mirror there. And then just a simple roof rack. When you got a CJ5, uh, you know, there's no room for your stuff. You have to have a roof rack on it. Um, if you want to take a look in on the interior here, so obviously tilt column, CJ5, you got to fit. But what really makes the CJ5 work with a, a somewhat big guy like myself is this seat. So look back out here, take a look right here. The body is cut and moved back so that the front seats can be squished as far back as possible and then down low. So that in conjunction with the tilt and the swing pedals, so these are later model CJ swing pedals modified and put underneath, uh, and the dash laid back gives you that room you need. Um, I'll walk around the other side here while you can look through and we'll point some stuff out. So it has a Model 18 transfer case, offset rear end, and then SM465 transmission with granny low. So it also has the Model 8 in the Model 18 transfer case, the Terra 3.1 low gears in it, so it gets your crawl ratio almost at 100. Um, he also used a Model 20 transfer case with a big hole to adapt to the 465, which is stronger, but the 18 guts in it. So that's kind of cool. Then you got your Tuffy center console, um, stuff like this, look, seat heaters in, in the, for the front seats. And then to keep with the dash and the motif that he's got going on with these nice toggle switches, Garrett went ahead and did the toggles here for the front and rear ARBs and the air compressor, uh, which is really cool. So coming around to the back of the Jeep, something that, uh, Tim does when he builds Jeeps that I think is really cool is this used to have a tailgate on it, but instead of keeping the tailgate, take the 3 16th diamond plate wrap, go all the way around solid in the back here. See this? No tailgate. And it strengthens the back of the Jeep. Then he welds up the opening where the tailgate was because you're never going to get in there and use it on a five. The seat's all the way back. Um, and then the spare tire can actually mount to all that structure and the wrap and you don't have to have a swinging tire rack. So it just simplifies everything. You got the license plate in the center of the tire, backup light, CB antenna, everything just kind of flows together. And then, you know, for your rear end, it's just a two by four steel rear bumper. So another really cool thing that Tim does is take a look at this gas tank here. So that is about, I think he said that one's about 18 gallons. The bottom is quarter inch steel, uh, fits between the frame rails hangs down that's integrated into the back of the Jeep so they don't have to have the gas tank under the seat. Uh, you take a look at the rear axle here. It is spring under, but if you look at the leaf springs, it's got square U-bolts and lower plates so nothing's hanging down. So it's basically like a high clearance spring under setup. Um, and this is just your standard offset Dana 44 rear end, um, but he did add a worn full floater kit. You know, that's kind of the old school setup so you can flat tow it. So it's got the internal hub style worn full floater kit, which is 30 spline inside and outside. So you basically unlock your hubs, hook up the tow bar and tow it up. And that's, that, that's how Garrett brought it up here. Um, there's just a lot of really clean trick, neat details on this Jeep. It's not fancy. I mean, even something as simple as mounting the high lift underneath the seats. Tim always loves to do that. And it also holds all your stuff in that's stored underneath the seat. So you got to find a spot for everything on a CJ5. And uh, I think we pretty much hit it. This is the ultimate CJ5. It's one of the only ones I can fit in and drive. So I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.